Hey guys, welcome back to another thrilling and definitely mind-blowing episode of Red's Time 101. Uh, today we are going to be talking clocks and glocks, mainly just clocks. Uh, I'm going to be showing you guys the basics of the game's most useful clocks, as well as how to use them and how they work. In this episode, I'm actually going to be doing a voiceover of myself here. I want to avoid having to retake every shot 30 times because I said hopper instead of dropper. Um, so now we're going to kick things off with what a Minecraft game tick is. Uh, before you click off the video, I promise this is actually going to be worthwhile and interesting. So Minecraft, like many games, runs at 20 ticks per second under normal conditions. This is separate from the OpenGL visual component of the game, which can run however fast your shitty computer can pump frames out. Um, Alright, so 20 times per second shit happens in your Minecraft world. You can check the wiki for specifics, but things like mobs attempt to spawn, chunks are unloaded, player position is updated, etc. This also includes things like redstone. Now, just so everybody is on the same page here, I'm going to be measuring clock speed and game ticks in this episode, not redstone ticks. So ignore that incredible amount of stupidity and let's get started. The first clock we're going to chat about today is a very speedy boy. This clock activates once every game tick, which, if you were paying attention earlier, is 20 times per second. The design is simple, and if we slow down the game to one tick per second, you can see it in action here. The pistons are being updated by the redstone blocks once a second in this slowdown version of the game. Um, anyway, because most redstone components have delays and nerfs, this isn't exactly the most useful clock, but it is still fairly cool. The only non-technical use case is to make the most frustrating noise machine imaginable, as you can see here. Okay, on to our next and pretty neat three game tick clock. Uh, now this one actually has a use as pistons can fire every three ticks, which means this clock allows us to power pistons as fast as possible. I promise this is going to be the last super complicated clock we are covering. Uh, if we slow the game down and look at the actual design here, we can see that the pistons above the pistons trading the redstone blocks are actually updating the other pistons, uh, which provides that three tick delay between the signal output. Um, if we chuck some concrete here, you can see how ridiculously speedy this would be for something like a concrete maker or any other contraption that passes blocks around with pistons. On to another very useful clock. In front of me here is a four game tick clock which happens to be the fastest a dropper can be updated. This means that if you want your items to be absolutely rammed through a dropper line, uh, this is the clock for you. Slowing down the game, we can see this design is incredibly simple and makes use of the comparator continuously depowering itself and then repowering itself to a signal strength of 15. As you can see with the single dropper example, the items are dispensed at a crazy speed. If you combine the circuit to create a dropper line, you can see that this is quite the way to get items around your world. Now, this is everybody's go-to clock because it's just absurdly simple. Two observers facing each other producing a six tick clock. Uh, while this doesn't exactly have a specific use, it's my go-to clock because it's super easy to set up and it's quite compact as well. This is great to use for dropper lines because you can just chain a ton of observers together next to the droppers and you don't have to worry about the signal strength or any other powering issues. This is another super simple clock here. As it currently stands, this is a 12 game tick clock, but there is some customization with this one. For every tick of delay we add to our repeaters, we slow down the clock by two ticks. So if we were to put both repeaters here on full delay, we could make a 24 tick clock, or even an exact 20 game tick clock, which would fire once a second. We can slow the game down to see what's happening here, as it's kind of interesting to watch how long it takes for the torch to do its redstone things. We can also extend our repeater line out for more customization, but at this point, hopper clocks are going to give you more precision anyway. All right, I promise we were almost there. I wanted to include this on the list because it's the most simple hopper clock and the mechanic is pretty neat to understand here. Every eight ticks, one item can move through a hopper. This translates to a hopper being able to move 2.5 items per second. This means that one full rotation of our items between these two hoppers takes 16 ticks, making this a 16 tick clock. This works because the hoppers just keep trading off the items from one another. You can stop the clock by locking one of the hoppers by powering it, 
And to actually get a redstone signal from the clock, you can place a comparator reading the contents of one of the hoppers. Here we have the famous Etho hopper clock. It operates identically to the previous clock, except you can customize the time the clock runs at by placing more or less items in one of the hoppers. If we slow the game down, you can see that the redstone block above that is moved by the pistons only moves when all of the items reach one of the hoppers, allowing for full control. Without any fanciness, uh, the problem with this clock is that whatever delay you give it, it will take double the amount of time because then it has to slowly trickle all the items back to the first hopper to be in its default position. But as you can see here, we can fix that with the super simple circuit that activates both times the redstone block moves. Now, in order to customize how this hopper works, remember that hoppers transfer 2.5 items per second. Uh, so if you want 10 seconds of delay, you would put 25 items in one of the hoppers. Um, at maximum, this hopper clock can have a 128 second delay, if we did the little math there, but by changing these together, you can have whatever type of clock delay you want. This is excellent for things like dispensing water in mob farms or harvesting your crops every X amount of time. This is a great clock all around here. Thank you guys very much for watching this slightly more intense episode of Redstone 101. I hope it was useful and not too technical to make it bland as hell. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you were born in the last 200 years. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.